How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, the show where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Mitchell Trubisky sneakily throwing shade at the Bears. We're going to break down his comments today from Bill's training camp, and we're also going to be discussing the cornerback two situation in Chicago. Desmond Trufant versus the second-year Kindleville door with a lot of promise. Today in episode number 150 of Uncut, we're going to be breaking it all down for you. Uh, before I introduce myself, and my co-host i would like to say we're back doing this each and every day of the week we're all freed up now we're going to be putting out the most comprehensive and most consistent coverage on the web during the entire 2021 2022 bear season so if you would like to join us and keep supporting us do us a favor wherever you are listening subscribe drop a follow drop a like we appreciate your guys' support it definitely keeps us going I'm your host, Chris Malpe, today to talk about some interesting Mitchell Trubisky news and also just some more stuff from Bears training camp. I'm joined with both of my co-hosts, Parsh Shaw and Jalen McClinton. Guys, how's it going? Doing pretty good. Um, you know, we're, we're finally, I guess, going to be recording every day. I'm excited to hop on the show every day. It's, uh, it's fun to do. I enjoy it. I feel like it just feels like football season's almost here. The excitement's almost here. And, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, same. Like I said, uh, football this Saturday. Well, football actually starts on Thursday, but Saturday for us. Yeah. So, uh, it feels good to have football back, but it was to miss football. Yeah, definitely feels good to have the Bears back. Uh, I'm th- pretty confident I'll be attending the first two preseason games. Also going to training camp a couple of more times before I head off to college. So a lot going on. Definitely getting uh, very indulged with the Bears right now and everything going on. There's a lot to look forward to. Finally, a lot of news going around to the point where we can actually record consistently. That's half the reason why we weren't recording a lot throughout the summer. There's just not much going on. Uh, But I am excited uh, to continue to do this consistently and get you guys the content that you deserve. So let's start this one off. Uh, We're definitely starting it off with a little bit of a hot topic right now. A lot of Bears fans going wild on social media. Mitchell Trubisky's comments today at Bell's training camp, kind of throwing shape at the Bears. We'll break it down a little bit. Uh, Trubisky said earlier today on signing with the Bills, it's nice to be in a place where people want you and care about you and your progression as a person and a player. He also came out a little bit earlier, I believe just now, and said that he wasn't too surprised that the Bears did decline his fifth-year option, obviously last offseason. He said, throughout the process, you can see that they continuously were believing in me less and less, happy to be on a team where I am wanted. So definitely going to have to break this down. There's there's one truth through here. Uh, Parth used to be his biggest fan uh, for sure, but – Parth, we we don't really see Mitchell Trubisky ever speak out like this throughout his time in Chicago. He was great with the media, always humble. When he was pressed, he he came out with honest answers and never really threw shade at everyone or at anyone at all. But now we see him pressing the Bears a little bit. Definitely, I'm not entirely sure that that comment was meant towards the fans. A lot of fans are taking it that way, but uh, definitely throwing shade at the organization and the coaching staff. What do you what do you think about these comments by Trubisky? I think they're unfair. Um, I think uh, Trubisky had his opportunity here in Chicago. Um, he had plenty of time to play, uh, you know, four years, I, I'd say. And I was one of his biggest fans. So for him to say something like that, I was shocked, especially for an organization that I thought gave him almost everything they could, uh, especially at the time. You know, the Bears were coming in with like a – Ryan Pace was coming in in a rebuild situation. And, you know, bringing in Trubisky was obviously a splash move. And seeing him come here and, uh, you know, we all saw what happened. It, it didn't work out here in Chicago. Um, we all wanted wanted it to work out. All the fans, you know, loved him till the end of the day, showed the respect. Uh, even when he was leaving, I felt like the respect was shown. Um, but for him to say something like that, I was shocked, surprised. I feel like it's more towards the coaching staff in the front office more uh, more than the fans. But um, the fans taking it just like, just like the, just like we're part of the, front front office i guess so i mean at at the end of the day we're an organization we're a whole fan base we're all together and for a former player like someone that we loved and i'd say uh, some of us still like him and still have a lot of respect for him um but after this it's kind of it's kind of hard 
Yeah, you were tweeting out some explicit words that we can't really say on the podcast here when when you heard about those comments on Twitter. You know, although the actual draft selection itself was questionable and we settled and didn't take Sean Watson and all that, I don't I don't like dwelling in the past. But yeah. uh, you know, Bears fans have given him a lot of crap. Uh, that's definitely true. But I think there's nothing more than Bears fans wanted for him to succeed. And if he succeeded. The Bears would have been on a path to succeed, and we wouldn't be having this conversation because he would be extended in Chicago and wouldn't be on another team making remarks about his former front office and organization. So uh, it seems like there were some times definitely that we didn't put him uh, on the best path. Matt Nagy didn't trust him at times. You could say sometimes Ryan Pace didn't essentially build around him, focusing on the defense. I think this 2021 offseason is the first time since – Ryan Pace arrived to Chicago that we've really seen him hone in on the offense and take a focus on that. And that's going to be good for Justin Fields and Andy Dalton, but it wasn't essentially for Mitchell Trubisky. So I, I, I can see sometimes where he got shot in the foot, but I think that's something that you see in the NFL across the board. It's a business at the end of the day. Things aren't going to work out perfectly. If they worked out perfectly and everyone was Tom Brady, there would be no complaints about anyone uh, in the national football league, but the bears gave Mitchell Trubisky every single chance to succeed and he wasn't good enough. I'm not going to essentially come out and say he sucked, but he did not play to the bar that he needed to to keep the Bears to win games and, and, yeah, exactly. and being a competitive team. And we weren't able to win games in the playoffs either. So uh, good riddance, honestly, for Mitch. Um, I, I, know, I, I kind of want some good luck in the future. I'm also just kind of a little bit thrown off by these comments as well. Um, but we gave him every opportunity. I think there's no denying that. Even I don't think Jalen can deny that. But uh, it's, it's it's just unfortunate. So Jalen, I'm going to pass it to you. I know you're going to have an interesting take on these comments. But Mitch Trubisky throwing a little bit of shade uh, at the Bears organization earlier today. What do you think about his comments? I mean, I think it's I think it's fair. I don't think what he said is not true at all. Um, you know, obviously, like, like I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody knows this. Like, as we've seen, um, you know, in his second year, uh, with, with Nagy, or yeah, you know, like two years ago, 2019, where he, you know, he was starting to, you know, play not like he was in 2018 with his first season in Nagy, and we start to believe that Nagy didn't, you know, really trust him with his full offense because he felt like it was, it was complicated or too complicated for Trubisky. And I think we, we can agree to a certain point that he, you know, didn't fully trust Trubisky at all. Uh, in the, I guess, next step of his offense after 2018. And I, I think that's true. You know, like like you said, when you decline his fifth-year fifth option, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all knew that was happening. Everybody in Chicago knew that was going to happen, especially after his, uh, you know, his third year. Um, that he, he talked to the team was, you know, not believing him. And, that, and that's fair. You brought in Nick Foles, which I think <clears throat> was like a <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I don't I don't know if, like, he was com- – you were confident in Trubisky to win that – that quarterback competition because we all see how Nick Foles, how, how bad Nick Foles is right now. I don't even know why he's still on the team, um, but I, I can see why he said that. Now, at the same time, uh, when he was like, he said, he said, I really didn't like look at the comment. I just said, he said, uh, you know, he, he's got, he's on a team that believes in him and believes in him, in his character and as a player and stuff like that. Now, I don't think that's, that's fair for us because, you know, the city of Chicago backed him. I'm still backing him right now, and he's he's a, he's a backup quarterback um, to an MVP candidate um, in Josh Allen. So, um, you know, I, I think it's fair what he said, and, and some of it's not, but it, it is what it is. Uh, like I said, I want to see Trubisky uh, succeed. You know, hopefully he can get another starting um, starting opportunity, uh, being a starting quarterback in the NFL, but who, who knows at this point. Yeah, uh, definitely some interesting comments that has Chicago riled up. Do us a favor if you're watching on YouTube, uh, go down in the comments. Let us know what you think about those comments because I posted them on Instagram. I also put them in the community tab here on YouTube. A lot of people not too happy uh, on Twitter as well, so um, should be an interesting fallout from that. But let's move into some more positive Bears news, something that we can actually talk about and debate respectfully. Uh, we're going to talk about the cornerback two position. There's obviously a lot going on here. Kendallville Door did start one game in 2020, his rookie season had one pass defended, also had 17 tackles throughout the year. He's a prospect who is also good on special teams, someone who can play in the slot. He can also possibly play at safety if the Bears would ever need him there. A very versatile second-year player with a lot of promise. And then the Bears, obviously, this offseason, one of their first signings, they brought in Desmond Trufant, the veteran who spent most of his career 
uh, up to this point with the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously had a couple really good seasons in Atlanta, 2014, 61 tackles and three interceptions. Also 2019, his last season in Atlanta before he was let go. He had some injury issues, but he did have 18 tackles and a whopping four interceptions for the amount of games he played in. He was really solid last year. He spent his time in Detroit, another NFC North team. Still struggled with some injuries. I remember he got injured when they faced off against the Bears in week one. He had 20 tackles and one interception. Uh, the Bears obviously lost Kyle Fuller this offseason. That's a tough blow for sure, and no one's going to really be able to fill his void at quarterback one, maybe not even Jalen Johnson just yet. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts on who should be the quarterback two for the season. Trufant obviously comes in with a lot of experience. He's a grizzled veteran who's played and I believe been a pro bowler throughout his career. So part at cornerback two, obviously the future is looking bright for Kendallville door, but who do you want the bears to start week one, him or Desmond Trufant? I'd love to see Kendallville door out there, honestly. And, um, you know, for all the people saying it might be too early for him, I don't think so. Um, Cause you could say it's too early for Jalen Johnson to be the cornerback one for the Chicago bears. Um, but why not put put out the two youngest guys in the team who you know give you the best chance at the end of the day, and uh, they'll get they're they're only going to be getting better. Um, so I do understand they'll they'll have their struggles and stuff. But if you if you trust Vildor to be that cornerback too and that cornerback that you want for the future, someone who you want here to be playing for a while, why not put him out there and let him get his reps, um, let him get you know valuable time valuable experience compared to someone like Trufant who's already had that experience who's already had all those reps he's a veteran now he's a pro so you can put Trufant in any in any time you want um you know and plus the Bears also have a hole at nickel too I mean, and the nickel position is open to anyone also so any of these guys can step in at nickel too so I wouldn't be surprised yeah, the nickel position is an interesting one, too, and I'm sure we'll discuss that down the road. The only reason I haven't really mentioned Vildor at nickel yet is because I actually like Duke Shelley there. I like the spot I, that he's with. I think he's been in Chicago for a while and started to progress well. Another interesting name that's going to be brought up for sure is Thomas Graham Jr., so that should be interesting as well. But if I had to choose between these two guys for cornerback two, for now, I think I'm going to stick with Desmond Trufant. He only played in six games last year and nine games the year before, but his last full season was in 2018 in Atlanta. He had 12 passes defended as well as no interceptions, but also racked up a whopping 66 tackles. That's pretty solid numbers. Now, I do think he is removed from the best playing uh, days of his career. He's got 14 career interceptions and 83 career passes defended. I think that's just going to help him in terms of having that experience and being someone who can help breed these other guys in the Bears' secondary. I would like Kendall Vildor and Jalen Johnson to eventually be headlining the Bears' secondary. Um, and Duke Shelley as well. You know, Honestly, I think that would be three, pace, three picks that Ryan Pace hit on if they were the three starters one day down the road. Jalen Johnson obviously is going to step into some very big shoes this year, stepping over to cornerback one, but I'm confident that he'll be able to play well. And I also just think Trufant brings some experience that – a lot of these young guys don't essentially have. In fact, they just don't have. So um, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not Jalen Johnson, or excuse me, Desmond Trufant and Jalen Johnson, to be frank, can stay healthy. Uh, definitely some worries about this secondary uh, heading into 2021. But for now, I think I'm going to stick with Desmond Trufant. Kendall Vildor's time will come in Chicago. I'm very confident about that. But I just don't think it is right now. Maybe sometime through the season if, if Trufant starts slipping up or if someone gets injured, uh, Vildor will get his chance, and I'm looking forward to that but not just yet in my mind. So, Jalen, before we close this one off, this is an interesting debate, and I'm sure we could go on for hours and hours and hours about it, but who do you think's better suited for the cornerback two position in a couple of weeks, Desmond Trufant or Kendall Vildor? I'm going to go Kendall Vildor here. Um, first of all, he's young. This is his second year. Uh, he was drafted in the fifth round um, in the 2020 draft, and uh, he, as he got opportunities um, at the end of the season last year, we seen him make a, a decent amount of plays. He was, he was making some nice tackles. I remember. Uh, I think we're playing the Vikings. Yeah, he made a nice a nice tackle on on. Uh, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. Yeah. The open field tackling is. Yeah. And Dalvin really Cook good. was so pretty. Like he, he, you know, he was like good tackle. He uh, hit him on the helmet and stuff like that. So, um, I definitely think that he's in play. You know, obviously we've been seeing a lot of. Uh, comments coming out of training camp that the Bears are very happy with, uh, you know, how he's playing. He's probably been one of the best corners uh, opposite Jalen Johnson uh, in in training camp so far. And I think he deserves that opportunity too. Um, you know, one, 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 he's been, 
I guess you can say in the system, obviously, we have a def new defensive coordinator with Sean Desai, and Chuck Pagano was here last year, but, you know, he's, he's been here a, a year longer than uh, Desmond Trufant, and he's also younger. So um, if, if he's uh, continues to play well, I I'll say go with the young guy, you know, and have a have a young but, um you know, steady cornerback uh, duel with him, with him and Jalen for years to come. Yeah, I will say it is – a good thing to note that Vildor is seemingly putting enough pressure on Trufant at this point where we even have to discuss this. I think coming into training camp, people thought this obviously was going to be clear cut Trufant's uh, starting well, position. Well, Vildor has nickel. Yeah, and I still think it'll play out that way. And we'll probably in the next couple of days discuss uh, the nickel position as well because that's an interesting three way competition with Vildor, Shelley, and Thomas Graham Jr., who's an interesting prospect out of Oregon. But the Bears. You know, the secondary is a little young, doesn't have much depth, but there's still a lot of promise with a lot of these young guys, so it should be interesting to see how it plays out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode number 150 of Uncut. If you guys want more content from us, head over to our website, BearDown.com. We're starting to post articles later this week, getting you ready for the 2021 season. We've definitely taken a long hiatus on our website, but we want to get you guys as much coverage as possible. There's a ton of people that work hard for us behind the scenes, so be sure to go check out our website if you have some extra time. The link to that is at the top of the description. If you'd like to enter any giveaways that we have, we're definitely going to be giving some stuff away in the future. If you'd like to see special guests that we're going to have on or help us decide what to record about, you can find the podcast on social media at Bear Down. That is on Instagram and Twitter. Definitely a great way to connect with us and see what we're up to on a day-to-day -day basis. You kind of get a behind-the-scenes look as well. And finally, you can find the links to all of our social media pages down in the description, our Instagram, as well as Twitter pages. Definitely worth checking out. You can see our thoughts on all things Bears, all things National Football League, and the entirety of Chicago sports. It's definitely worth checking out. And once again, another great way to interact with us. Our Josh Allen McClinton, two days in a row. We're getting back into the groove of things, but it definitely feels good to be back. Any last words before we close this one out? Yeah, no, it definitely feels good. Um, we'll probably get another one up for you guys tomorrow. And, yeah, that's about it. Bear down. I ain't got much to say. Go Sox. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Eloy Jimenez is the best player. He freaking rakes. Yeah, uh, I guess I guess my closing words would be it's kind of wild that we're already on episode number 150 uh, of this series. It really just shows the grind we've had the last – year and a third i i would say and As we've been months, we've, yeah. we've been very consistent at times we've been inconsistent at times but i think reaching 150 in this series the series that has probably sprouted our channel up the most in terms of our own commentary um it just shows overall that we've been grinding uh i don't know how many days it was since we launched the website and everything and and came up with us for the first time but uh this series has been huge on the channel you guys have absolutely loved it uh, it's, it's the only series that we have where we don't edit audio and cut things up and chop it up. So, um, you definitely get our raw emotions and thought, especially in some of the episodes around the NFL draft and free agency and games and stuff like that. But, uh, 150 episodes later, I'm happy that we got the idea, um, to do this series and I'm just so grateful for the support from all of you and we're going to keep it coming. So do us a favor, wherever you're listening, Follow, like, subscribe, share, do it, whatever. Keep supporting us. We're going to keep coming back with content for you guys each and every day. It's been a pleasure to be your host once again. My name is Chris Maltby. And Bears fans, as always, do us a favor and stay safe and bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.